the title of my talk is Slow, Small, Simple. And this is sort of my answer to how to uh, shift from global to local. Is our society a happy, happy place? Is this planet a happy planet? We used to believe naively that the economic growth will bring us to happiness, and those who are living in rich north are better off and happier than those who live in the developing, uh, the less developed and impoverished south. This basic assumption or belief, however, has been proven wrong. Many of us know that we are living in the age of global crisis, wars and conflicts, widening gap between the rich and poor, oppression, rise of totalitarianism, fascism, and uh, eroding democracy. And of course, the climate change, the environmental breakdown, and all the crises that go with it. And that's not all. We are faced with the social, mental, and spiritual illnesses that are so common in the so-called developed countries. Communal breakdown, alienation, violence to others and to oneself, um, uh, vicious competition, stress, overwork, depression, and so on. And Japan is the case. It has been more than a century uh, since Mahatma Gandhi criticized the ideology of economic growth and the technological advance. To him, the problem was not poverty, but the wealth itself. Not underdevelopment, but overdevelopment. While we have been passionately fighting over the poverty and, and the underdevelopment issues, we have really questioned the virtues of progress and wealth. Will they push? Oh, here. So, however, as Gandhi said, the world has always enough for every, everyone's needs, but never for anybody's greed. We must unlearn this economics of greed and relearn the economics of uh, needs. That will be a great shift from the economics of competition, possession, and domination to the economics of cooperation, sharing, and conviviality. The modern capitalist economy has been brainwashing us that the eternal race towards the more, bigger, and faster will make us wealthy and happier. That resulted in the tragic excess and wait a minute, more bigger and faster, right? The, this resulted in the tragic excess and the chaos, both physical and mental, and in both space and time. It is evident now that the well-being is not in that direction. So let us turn around, turn around and walk towards the less, smaller, and slower. <laughs> 20 years ago, I founded an organization called the Sloth Club. The three told the sloth, the wonderfully slow and peaceful animal living, in, living harmoniously in the jungle of Central and South America, is our icon symbolizing the great shift towards the slow, small, and simple. To be a sloth means to subtract. Don't we all learn not only addition, but uh, subtraction in the elementary school? We then must relearn slowing down, scaling down, downshifting, Simplifying, shortening the distance, localizing. In the year 2001, 
I wrote a book entitled So is Beautiful. This is the cover of my book. As you can guess, I was inspired by Yves Schumacher's famous Small is Beautiful, the title of which came from a phrase in the book. Man is small, therefore small is beautiful. What did he mean by human being, humans being small? That is to say, humans is localized, living in socially, culturally, and ecologically defined and bound space and time. Human life can only be sustainable within biological and cultural communities. What Schumacher said, about the size and the space appropriate for humans can also be said about time, appropriate pace and rhythm for humans. That's what I mean by slow is beautiful. Slowness is essential to each and every culture. Culture is a web of interdependent relationships both ecological, social, and spiritual. I'm trying to be a sloth. <laughs> culture, I'm a cultural anthropologist, by the way. Culture is a web of in independent, interdependent relationships, ecological, social, and spiritual. Okay, he is Inoue Hisashi, a celebrated Japanese writer. He once said, civilization tells us how far we can go. Civilization tells us how far we can go. And the culture tells us where we should stop. In each relationship, there is a befitting rhythm and a tempo and the appropriate amount of time spent. The soil, the air, animals, plants, and bacteria, the seasons that come and go, the movement of the sun and the moon, and the ocean tides. On this great tap natural ta tapestry, human thoughts and actions embroider new meanings through mythology, festivals, rituals, dances, songs, and poetry. Every community is a kind of commons with a complex web of relationships of humans with other humans, with nature and gods, deities, and spirits. It is a network of dependency and interdependency. It is an economic system of gift and sharing. There, Slowness, like smallness, is an essential property of any meaningful and worthy relationship. Everyone knows that it takes time to make a friend, nurture, and sustain love. If you want to be sustainable, go slow. Efficiency and love don't stand together. Nobody wants to be loved efficiently. What do you? Love, by definition, is slow. What is happiness? I wanted to learn a Japanese uh, word, shiawase. Shiawase. Actually, I want to call this conference Economics of Shiawase. <laughs> shiawase originally signifies togetherness, relatedness and a cooperation and expresses an old cultural worldview where everything is related. Contrast this with a modern individualistic, more competitive and uh, typically American idea of the pursuit of happiness. The word happiness, by the way, stems from a hap, meaning um, by chance and is very close to the word luck. Happiness
happiness as good luck, therefore, can come suddenly out of context, regardless of the relationships in which you live. Shiawase, a Japanese term, however, is a localized notion. It is meaningful only in a specific place and time, and within the context of real human and ecological communities. Here's one image of a shiawase. Imagine you were just born. As you open your eyes, the first thing you see is ten faces all looking down at you. Their smiling faces are all saying to you, Welcome to this world. Nothing to worry about. We are always by your side taking care of you. This particular image actually comes from our friend and uh, leader Helena. Helena Noble Hodges, the ancient futures, learning from Ladakh. Ancient futures, what a powerful notion. It challenges <laughs> it challenges the modern Newtonian linear uh, time and it reminds us that future not necessarily lies ahead of us. F future can be in the ancient times. Happiness or shiawase can be an, as ancient as a community. As ancient as sharing and as ancient as smiles on human faces. The most profound truth could be found just around yourself. Mirabayan. Oh, I don't have time for this, sorry. Uh, Mirabayan said, Do you know how to um, go back? Just Mirabayan, um, he's the, um, he lived in uh, 18th century uh, Japan, in the remote countryside, turning down, turning down all the career offers. He's, this is what he said. What is really amazing is not the flowers on a dead tree, but flowers on a living tree. What is miraculous is that we are alive and breathing now. Life is a miracle. So, in the time of crisis, there is always hope. Thank you.